Justice We remain standing for a moment of silence for all those first responders that we have lost since the last time we were together. And for the fact that there have been a million COVID deaths in the United yes. States as a result. Thank you. Okay. I get a motion on the uh, approval for the minutes from the regular meeting of April 14th. I make a motion, but I need to check the version to see instead of the well, language at the top of page three, we did not make a motion to return to the uh, public session because we don't do that. We come back into public session and um, there is no motion about it. And so it should read, uh, return the commission to public session at 7.25. And that whole motion language in italics should come out. Yeah. I, I second that as corrected. All right, Jude, did you get that? Oh, you're muted. But they already know. Okay. Um, motion was made and seconded for the correction. Uh, all those in favor of the amended minutes? Signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Uh, reports, Chairman's report. Um, I just have one thing on here. I was, uh, some of the uh, commissioners had approached me about in-person meetings and going away from teleconferencing. I reached out to the health director for selectmen, uh, and their response was that the town was going to continue to use virtual meetings. Um, so that's their opinion at this time now. Um, so that's where we are. Um, although, is anyone attending by virtual meeting tonight? Not tonight. No, no just Jude is on virtually. But the public has a right to come in at any point. Right. Um, people watch it. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Um, I met at any other commission. No. Not tonight. Uh, the, only, the only thing that I would urge, and I know we don't have a problem with the four commissioners that are up here right now, is to make sure that if you are doing you know, a virtual connection, make sure you have a good internet connection, uh, make sure you're in an area free of distractions. I tell you, I just watched an RP on a special meeting. Yeah. And how annoying was that where people are joining the meeting, coming back home? Well, I missed that. Can you repeat what you said? You know, because they're just getting up leaving meetings. And I, yeah, I think that's totally wrong. I think it's um, wrong. You should have, you know, your attention <clears throat> while you're here. So that's the only thing I had on the chairman's report. Some people asked me about it. I said I'd reach out to the powers to be, and Thank that you. I did. Thank you. Yep. Uh, RTM member Sinto didn't, uh, wasn't one of those offenders, but she. No, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I no. know, but she would, I would rather her do those meetings in person and same with, you know, because we have four kids at home. So it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. That's a lot of corralling. In your, office but still not going out. he's still having frank pounding no. on the door Do dogs barking in the background yeah. and everything else it's just like well no. she she told me actually at one meeting somebody threw a cat you know what I mean? like, like, <laughs> like the cat kept coming up and it oh, okay. all right that would, that would... okay um chief report so i understand that the deputy gave a very brief report Last month, very brief and thorough, yeah. and thorough, and thorough. Well, he really set the uh, the <laughs> standard. I will try to do my best to that, or I'll just defer to him to give the report in the future if that's what you would prefer. <laughs> okay, uh, emergency management. Uh, you have in front of you a document that shows uh, the work product of data capable and avant grid for. Um, power outages this is a project that we've been working on since tropical storm Isaias. Uh, so we have better information about where the outages are. When an outage occurs, and we are the only department that we're the beta test for this because uh, it developed as a result of our interaction uh, with UI. Um, 
they're not ready to roll it out across the 17 towns, but uh, it is live for us and we have used it. Uh, we have tested when we have had minor outages to make sure that they display appropriately. When it does, uh, when an outage does occur, the streets and down to individual homes, uh, which you can zoom in on, will appear in red. Uh, so we will be able to say if, if Commissioner Brennan says, what's going on on Fairfield Beach Road, we'll be able to zoom in and identify exactly where that outage is. And ultimately, you I will code them according to the estimated restoration projection. Um, so you have a very long circuit, a very complicated circuit. Uh, they will uh, show that the main line will come on first within whatever time period that they dictate, and then individual lines or circuits off of that uh, as they work through the problem, um, and that may be in hours or days. Uh, so we think that this is going to be an extraordinary, valuable uh, 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 improvement in our discussion. You see on page two, it goes down to the street level. If you can you zoom in and you see down to individual circuits, uh, to individual homes. Uh, page three shows the legend. So in very large widespread outages, um, an area that has uh, one to 10 outages will be in that green circle with a white dot and then the others as they go along. Uh, ultimately, our goal, and, and let me just say on the fourth page, if there are uh, life support homes, uh, those that have indicated to you are that they are on life support equipment that is electricity dependent, uh, those houses will appear on the map and if there is an outage there, it'll certainly key, key us in uh, to do some outreach to outreach to make outreach to make sure uh, that they have uh, uh, you know the backup uh, power uh, and uh, can support themselves until the power comes back on, and give them good advice because we'll have estimated restoration times down to the circuit level. Um, also on that, we have tier two, tier one, and tier two priorities that include places like the fire, fire headquarters, police headquarters, town hall, Carrollton nursing home, um, all of the assisted, actually all of the assisted living facilities and now Sacred Heart University Regional Dispatch Center uh, as a priority. So those priorities will also appear on the map. So if there's an outage that includes one of the uh, critical facilities, it will show up on the map. Long-term, we want to be able to create a local layer that would be able to put on top of this that would include things like DeVita dialysis, that would include gas stations, you know, open or closed, power and no power, uh, food uh, in, in supermarkets, uh, hardware stores, so that those facilities that are important in the recovery phase, uh, we may not include massage envy, uh, but certainly we would want the gas station Sorry, Joe. Um, certainly, we want um, some of the uh, facilities that I described. Um, UI has been a great partner, and we have turned the corner uh, and have been turning the corner for a while with them since ESIS. We start yelling at each other and trying to find solutions uh, to the problem. So, uh, that is, I think, a significant improvement. I look forward to having a very quiet hurricane season and we don't use it at all, but that's not likely the case. Any questions on that? Great work. Okay. Great progress. Uh, other um, uh, emergency management, that's the topic for this month. Uh, we did uh, participate uh, with the health department and the region in an anthrax uh, um, it, he could tell COVID's over because we're back to running exercises on other kinds of uh, disasters. Um, so we did anthrax up at Sacred Heart, a great program, very well uh, facilitated. Um, and Deputy, myself, and Chief Sherwood participated in that. Um, we have a hurricane exercise with the state on the 24th, uh, and we'll do that uh, down here with our emergency management team. And, uh, and be prepared for hurricane season. I did want to um, mention that uh, we, as you know, and um, Firefighter Smuda will um, and mention, I'm sure, 
Uh, as you know, we're in arbitration. We have had one arbitration hearing that was done virtually. Uh, we have an in-person arbitration um, uh, session tomorrow here. Um, and then two other dates, I think two other dates have been scheduled, but they are in June and then in July. So this is a process that's not going very fast, but uh, certainly, you know, I, we hope that we can come to some resolution to many of the topics and either discard them and by mutual agreement, take them off the table. And hopefully in, in a perfect world, we'd settle everything without a formal, would, would, you know, just like in court, the, the settlement is made at the 11th hour before the judge renders a decision. Uh, that is unlikely for a couple of the issues, but, you know, I, I, our goal is to resolve as many as we can and have the state um, decide the uh, ones that we can't come to an agreement on. Uh, the regional uh, dispatch center at uh, Sacred Heart is moving forward. We met today. The control board, uh, which includes the four chiefs from police and fire for Westport and Fairfield, uh, met today. We've overcame a couple of the stumbling blocks regarding telephone systems and interconnection and cybersecurity um, and some of the threats uh, using the advice from Dave Kelly. Uh, so uh, that is moving forward. And Westport is working hard and hopefully by the beginning of August, uh, uh, we will actually be a joint center. Uh, right now, Fairfield is operating very, very well out of the site, uh, but we need uh, you know, to, to resolve the issue. In outstanding training issues, some technology to get Westport up there. And then sometime after January of next year, we'll entertain you know, other communities that have expressed interest. Next, uh, uh, in two weeks, uh, uh, Mackenzie Jeratovic, uh, firefighter at the Academy, um, will graduate. Uh, that is on the 24th, uh, which is a Wednesday. And we hope to have a swearing in on Thursday, the 25th, for her and David Campbell. David Campbell, we hired from uh, Charleston, South Carolina, uh, relocated up here and uh, is, uh, did not need to go back to the academy. Uh, so uh, it, once I get a confirmation from the select woman's office that we will, that she's available on that day, uh, we'll send out a notice for, uh, for that. Um, and lastly, and most important, uh, the consortium test process has been completed. Um, the Candidate lists uh, that we'll have that is most important to us is the EMT list. I think there's 294 candidates on the EMT list, uh, total of 500, I think, uh, uh, so, no, 424 uh, for all this. Uh, so, uh, and there's only 21 paramedics on the on the paramedic list. Um, we should decide as a commission uh, how many candidates we want to interview. Uh, what what representatives from the commission uh, should sit on the interview process and begin that process uh, in earliest is in if the list will be out tomorrow. I don't have it yet. List will be out tomorrow. Um, and uh, I would hope that we take the early part of the month of June to finalize this process that gives us plenty of time to you know, do other things and uh, uh, pace ourselves for any potential hiring. Uh, we may have one vacancy by that time, a, a, a pending uh, anticipated retirement. Uh, I would think that a safe number for positions to be filled by the department in fiscal year or in fiscal year 23, beginning on July 1st. So we have two fire academy classes. I would target um, and guess that four is a good number. Um, there's only one right now that is projected, but we need to have uh, be ready to go. That means that we have to interview much more than that. Uh, but you know, I would I would recommend that uh, we anticipate filling at least four positions over the course of one year. And oh, oh, for the second year, what do you anticipate? We got no one that's uh, sensitive. So there are a number of a number of personnel who were hired uh, in 1990, 
uh, that are right 1991, I think 91. So yeah. they're all eligible. Um, just a matter of whether any are interested. I, you know, it typically in a, any given year, four or five is the maximum number. But doesn't that jump with the new contract? I think that'll be settled. So, yeah, if, <laughs> no, I understand it will be settled for arbitration, but often that triggers. It does. I understand. Yeah, I think put in the retirement papers rather than be subject to the new contract. When we oh, fine. when fine. we look at the people who are uh, close to um, retirement, there are some people in that class of um, ninety one. They're nowhere close to considering retiring. Um, contract or no contract. And I think that, you know, uh, so eight or nine over the course of over two years, I think it's a, a reasonable number. Mark, do you have any different perspective? Uh, I don't really have any of the numbers, but I know of that, that's the, the class of you know, 13 of the guys. Yep. I think there's maybe six or seven of them left. Uh, those with over 30 years, I would put a ballpark at 10 that could just say, you know, Whenever, mm -hmm. so I, I don't disagree. I think four or five in any given year would, would probably yeah. cover it. So we will be ready to go, um, and uh, we can work up a schedule. I think that the um, and it doesn't have to be decided tonight. You know how many candidates? I think we want to look at what that list looks like. Um, what candidates are that we are that we know are very strong that may be down in the 15, 16 range. And we want to make sure that we include them in the interview. Uh, if there's diversity, uh, gender, ethnic uh, mm -hmm. diversity in the list, we would certainly uh, adjust the number to include them. If at all, but we're not going to go to 50 or 60, but you know, it, it, we're not going to stop at 15. When we know at 18, you know, there's a female candidate or a minority candidate. So we typically make those kind of decisions. So my observation, because we thought we were interviewing for enough candidates, in fact, I think 40 rounds, that um, we should be interviewing for a higher number. Um, maybe you call it 18 months for the buyers, mm -hmm. but, but the other advantage is people want to come to Fairfield, and if they know are on our list, then they may not take another job. And that's to our advantage. Um, I also, I am willing to be on the panel again if you need to, and I would prefer to finish the interviews by June 20th. Yeah, I would agree. Hey, look at my gun. Uh, Stop that. But right. if you're looking for well, let's, we hired uh, about a third of what we interviewed. Is that right? I'm trying to remember, Deputy. Twenty percent yeah. to thirty percent. Yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah. we can uh, we can uh, have a discussion after the uh, shish report. Sure. That's the end of my report. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on. I That's a record, Jude. Fourteen yes. minutes. I'm here. Report. So, that's thank what you God. Said. I'm glad you. I I'm glad you took note of what everyone was saying. Thank you. <laughs> um, from the commission, uh, in the past, uh, there are two commissioners that sat in on the interview process. Um, would and and last for the last two times, three times, three times. Thank last you. two years. Last last entire cycle. Like last two years, it's been Commissioner Brennan and myself. Does anybody else wish to sit on that? It, I mean, it's, it, it, it could be long days, but it's also exciting, um, interesting, um, and you are helping to shape the future of the department for the next 20, 30 years. And you get to know current firefighters. Yeah. So if Anybody else would like to sit on that commission or on that interview board, please let me know and then we'll, you know, we'll figure it out because it, it's a good mix, I think, how it's set up. 
Now, you, you were in one of those groups, right? Uh, the interview panel? Or yeah. The, uh, yeah. Have been yet. No. no, no, no. But oh, you were interviewed yeah. by us with the two yeah. commissioners and the. No, I don't know. You're the group that you got here. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I was before the uh, sorry. Okay. All right. Because I, I was just looking for input. As long as somebody was here, well, I'm let me just to, they, let well, me just well. say that you know a certain trepidation when the board uh, you know there was proposed that you guys were going to participate uh, in that, and it's like you know because it's usually a, a chief's panel um, to a person. Everybody said that you added this tremendous value to the process, uh, different perspectives, and uh, they found it very helpful. So. Uh, I can only advocate uh, that we continue on that uh, to include the commission uh, on the panel. Because uh, the good. other way then would be to go back the way we used to do it and then have to have a special right. meeting with all the commissioners doing interviews. So this eliminated that because one of the uh, one of our charges is the, the hiring process of yeah. new firefighters. So we combined it with the chief's interview and our interview we tied together and it seemed to go real smooth. That's perfect. Um, so if, again, if anybody is interested in that position and I'm gonna send it out to the um, commissioners that aren't here, um, please let me know, send me a note saying, hey, I think I would like to do that. Uh, the thing is, is when we do do it, we need consistency. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be there for one day, you have to be there for the other days, you know, because it usually goes two, three days. Uh, definitely three days. Yes. I mean, given the numbers, it would be three full days. And I think you could complete the interviews and the scoring and produce a list by the end. Right. Well, yes. and, and we had, we can shorten the time between interviews as we did right. towards the very end that you don't need as much of a gap and you can fit if you really want to you can fit 10 people in a day okay. you do, we, we do five or five uh, I, 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 I don't see, i don't see an issue why we wouldn't do that right yeah. um but yeah so so you know if you're interested in it um think about it get back to me um i don't need an answer tomorrow but i would like to start putting something together um, and say, so. Um, and given when you get the list of what it takes to get ready to do the interviews, what do you think is the earliest and the latest? Um, one thing we've heard is that a lot of EMT classes are ending June, uh, in around the first week of June. So if you wanted to grab any of those people who are just right now, you know, maybe people who signed up and said, oh, I want to become an EMT, so I'm on the list. So that's up to you. Yeah. you know, then that way we wait until after, you know, after that point, and I'll find out what kind of the day the state. Yeah, because my concern, and, and again, we know they have to have their EMT at the time of appointment. My concern is, is the class finishes up. When are they taking their test? Right. No, I, I, you know, I, because, I think because a lot of times the test is weeks out. So well, even worse than that is producing a certificate is weeks beyond that. Uh, that's uh, you must have had that experience, Mark. Uh, you know, yeah, well, when I was you know young and dumb and waited a year to take my EFT written because I took when I was eighteen. Yeah. So you know, it's up to the student to schedule that and make that happen as well. So, I, I I just don't want to, you know, go through the whole interview process, take up two or three slots with somebody. No, absolutely not going to have it. Certificate that's why I, I want to research that to find out if that's the, the state exam. And I think they know whether they pass like a day or two or whatever after, but maybe the certificate doesn't go right. fine. But um, I'll, I'll research yeah, that. Yeah, but if we have some proof that they pass, then right, right, we can yeah. work with that. Because yeah. Yeah, again, it's, it's a lot of work to interview these people. I mean, you Absolutely. know, if you're there. Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't want to start interviewing people with no. the, the promise oh. that they're going to, yeah, right. you know, that they're going to have it. Right, no. absolutely. So, uh, any other questions on this subject? Or so, we'll do some research and find out those dates. I'll have the list, I will communicate uh, uh, to the commission some of those details, and then 
we can make a decision. Yeah, the, the, the sooner the better. We well, will have to make a decision before the next Board of Fire Commission. Yes. Right, and, and the reason why I said the sooner the better is because if we are going to have people sit at it, some people may have to put in for vacation time and everything right. else. So, you know, we don't want to be right then at the last minute. Right. So, um, anything else on the Chief's report? No, sir. Okay. Deputy Chief. Okay. I, regarding fire operations, um, we had a busy month. Uh, the firefighters were very busy and did great work. Uh, 64 Road Wood Drive, there uh, was a report of structure fire. I happened to be on the road. I got there before the first two engines, so I got to watch them in action, which is always, you know, something professionally very interesting. Uh, and uh, Chief's car got there right before me, so they went in. They said where the fire was. Uh, but the engine company right up, did everything by the book and went right in and extinguished the fire, kept it uh, the damage minimum, and it was a great work. Uh, no injuries to anyone. Uh, also on Kings Highway, um, quick uh, reporting by passerbys in the middle of the night uh, called in the fire. I, I think, believe an 80 year old occupant was found in the next room on the floor. It was uh, uh, the fire was knocked down very quickly uh, and the occupant was removed, brought to the hospital, but for, unfortunately uh, succumbed to his injuries a couple of days later. Uh, but, uh, but it, you know, he had all the chance that he could have because our people responded very quickly, did everything what they were supposed to do. And, and, uh, and another example of the great work our, our people do day, day in and day out. Um, in the personnel realm, um, we have, uh, our, well, actually this is a, uh, so not personnel, but uh, RFP is out for uh, turnout gear. Um, we're renewing our turnout gear. Uh, so we're working on that. We have an RFP for promotional testing, which we're working on um, because of our uh, lieutenants and uh, assistant chiefs testing will have to be in the next fiscal year. So we have to get that out so that we can um, you know, uh, have a, a company uh, on their calendar. Uh, we had, uh, we were at, Career night um, at Wakeman Boys and Girls Club um, during the last this last period, and uh, one of our members, Brendan Murray, one of the uh, young firefighters uh, uh, that I think you might have interviewed. He might have been in that group that uh, we've interviewed, but uh, very uh, very good. I've seen him talk to uh, school kids uh, very recently, so we decided to bring him in for career night. And um, there were uh, trades and other public safety uh, organizations there. And um, he represented us very well from when I heard a lot of good compliments on him. And he says it was a busy night, a lot of people asking questions. Did they get much of a turnout? This uh, is a new thing. It is a new thing. And he said there were a lot of people there. I didn't get a, uh, a count, but I'll try mm -hmm. to find out from uh, the lady at, uh, at Fairfield mm -hmm. Public Schools exactly how many. Um, but uh, so, so that that was uh, that worked out very nice, and um, you know, so maybe these people will be thinking about us in the next uh, you know cycle of uh, entry level testing. Uh, in regard to facilities, station three um, floor and dividers were installed. The day room and kitchen flooring, I think, is going to be soon if it's not already started. I'm not. It's uh, it, it's shortly, if not. Station five, we have a rec put in for um, the dividers at that. Uh, for their sleeping quarters, we had a schemata. We had a you know scheme set up for that. Then um, a member at Station Five, who is a builder, said, "Hold on, um, I've got a better scheme for you with the same parts." He, he looked at you know he looked at the the blueprints, and so we just sent that to the contractor, the vendor, and said, "Let's do this if we can. It's not going to cost us any more, and it actually is a better lay layout than the company provided." So. Um, uh, firefighter pastor, so it's, it's great. Uh, we uh, uh, we had the bid uh, the bids come back on the bathroom projects uh, for stations one, two, and five. So um, uh, we chose uh, to start with the project at station two. Um, there was a, a, a relatively low bid by a very reputable company, and um, so we met with that. Uh, contractor the other day purchasing and DPW and members of the fire department. And we did a site walkthrough at station two for any last questions. They'll be starting um, this, you know, soon. But what they're going to do is they're going to order a lot of the equipment because of all the 
the, the supply chain issues. They don't want to start deconstructing and then say, oh, okay, this, you know, this, you know, uh, item is not going to be here until six months or nine months or, you know, 11 months or whatever. So they're going to order the equipment, they're going to store it. And when it's time, they're going to hit the ground running. So uh, they didn't give us a good idea on how long the project was going to take, but they're, uh, they're anxious to get in there, in and out. And they have a deep bench from what I've heard. So uh, hopefully, you know, they'll be able to uh, knock the project off very quickly. Um, in regards to the budget, uh, the operating budget uh, uh, just, I believe, passed the RTM. So it's the last stage. So uh, we finished the fiscal year 23 operating portion of the budget. Uh, the um, We are also involved um, with a special um, ask for capital money uh, along uh, with the police on the radio, um, the radio funds. So um, that has passed the Board of Selectmen the Board of Finance, and it's headed to the RTM. I haven't got the date on that yet, Chief, maybe Chief does, but um, the, that's the next step. And uh, so far, it's been uh, unanimously passed on the first two boards. Uh, and that's the, uh, that concludes my report. Any other questions for the Deputy Chief? I, I have two, and I can only remember one right now. <laughs> um, a while back, I, I know the Chief was talking about um, the garage doors. Did we ever get a no, contractor to bid on the garage? I, I guess not. No, so but we are working on that. Um, we have some, um, there is something going on right now, and hopefully I'll have a report for you next month. Uh, there is movement going on. Today. Right, because I just know it, it came up a couple of times that it, it was a no bid. It was a no bid, and I'm no, just wondering. No if bid, we bid it back out, yeah. and then uh, there were some issues with that because the contractor was not responsive when we asked him some particulars on his bid that weren't that needed clarification. So uh, we spoke to purchasing, and purchasing uh, is guiding us on a uh, course of action, which I think will be beneficial. And, and I'll I'll give a better report, you know, uh, next month if if that's okay. So so. Progress on graduate progress, yes. Okay, but I'll, I'll take that. It's been no work has started, but um, we feel that it, these don't, don't have rose color on it. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and I know what the other question I had was um, Is there a change in the response for vehicle accidents or? just people are driving that bad that there's been an increase in vehicle accidents. We, 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 I, I haven't it, noticed a difference. I mean, I know they just went out on one just, uh, you know, right before I came. I, I, I've been watching them for a while. Lots of reports that accidentally interrupted people who started in COVID to drive really bad. And now there's more traffic and they're still yeah, driving. Yeah. Really bad. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody yeah. can figure it out and try yeah. again. Yeah. So I was just wondering if, if, if we did, you know, because, Vehicle accidents, you know, uh, normal vehicle accident, we, we don't respond to vehicle accident, airbag deployment, report of injuries and stuff. Injuries we respond, or fluids, yeah. But um, yeah, or fluids yeah. leaking. Um, but so that's, we didn't change anything and add more criteria no, to it. No, no, uh, no, no. Okay. All right. So, yeah. All right. Uh, again, any other commissioners got anything for the uh, deputy chief? Okay. Next on the agenda, Southport, and there's nobody here, and nobody's on the phone, right, Chief? I know. Okay. Stratfield, nobody here, nobody on the phone. Um, local 1426. Um, so, first and foremost, I'm Mark Stewart, I'm the secretary. Uh, nice to see everybody. Um, just echoing what the chiefs have said uh, the fatal fire on Kings Highway. Uh, our guys did all they could. Uh, got a fire, uh, happened to be one of the the local residents that likes to take pictures of us. So, um, you know, trying to reach out to them, make sure everything's okay. Um, that was a little interesting, but again, a fast knock. Uh, the guys did pretty well. Uh, the only thing to add is we're uh, moving towards the step three grievance for the probationary member of the academy um, for reimbursement for funds um, for meals. Um, I believe the number is $5.28. Uh, so we're moving through the state uh, process for that, our step three. Uh, and again, arbitration, hoping for the best, that could achieve. But, um, uh, you know, we feel we deserve some things and putting up the fight, that's all. Yeah. Uh, any, any other questions? I for, have a quick question. 
question. Yep, go ahead. What did you mean about the person that likes to take pictures of you? Uh, so there's a um, there's a resident lives uh, by station two. And you know, he just likes taking pictures of fire trucks. He gets videos of us. Yeah. They call it bum. Um, he'll take pictures of us outside the firehouse and the trucks. He likes seeing all the trucks and everything. So yeah, he, he's got a little group of friends that you, you see him running down Jennings Road when they go on an automatic alarm and take a video, he'll post it online of us. Is it a good thing? Yes. Yeah, we have to yeah. yeah. consider yeah. it a good thing, absolutely. Got it. Okay. Any other questions for? 1426? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, sir, Norma's not here. She, she did just ask if I'd mentioned a couple of things on the report. I, I'll just give you the summary. Uh, it's it's about the year's work from um, uh, for their volunteer hours. And I mean, they've, they've listed all the different things that they've done, and I could pass this around or, or transmit this to you. I, I just got it. But uh, the bottom line is that the total CERT volunteer hours for 2021 was 3,220 hours all the different things. And if they, um, I guess FEMA has a volunteer hour, hourly rate Converter? just yeah. to convert. And the value is $91,898.80. And it just shows they ask for nothing. They they cost nothing and yeah. they just give. And, and they're just, you know, such good, uh, good people who are very dependable when we need them from anything to, you know, uh, uh, you know, calling for the vaccine, you know, telling the senior citizens, okay, this is how to navigate the BAM system and, and distributing food, distributing um, the test COVID test kits and all the other great things that they did during the year. So, um, you know, we sing their praises because uh, yeah. they're, they're great. great. They're a great organization. Okay. Um, that, that number would be higher. Be higher yeah, that, the number. That, that FEMA that conversion number must be really low. Well, yeah, probably, yeah, they probably haven't. They're, 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 they're not using uh, Northeast uh, <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably using minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. federal yeah. minimum wage. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's way more than that. Okay, next thing that we have on our agenda is donations. There is a donation. I make a motion to accept uh, one check from firefighters' equipment uh, of New York for $4,000 and one from the Lau family of $2,000. Okay, a motion to make. Can I get a second? Seconded by uh, uh, Commissioner Burke. Uh, any discussion? Can I uh, uh, call for a vote? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Extensions? Nobody passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, old business. We have charter revision. Do you have something to report, Commissioner? Well, yeah, because I sort of frustrated with the lack of response for the town attorney. And I understand it's not high priority. So I called the clerk of the Superior Court in Bridgeport and they are researching to try to find the actual decision because it's all pre-digitization. And so it's actually going down into the vaults on uh, Main Street and pulling the case record, but they are working on it. Okay, thank you. Uh, new business? We have no new business in the commission. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, um, asking for more sick time. That'd be new business. Nope. Nope. Got it. Thank Hold you. it. Call it. <laughs> new with this. I'm sorry. Thank okay. You. In that case, uh, next on the agenda, item seven, executive session, second injury leave, personnel update. Can I get a motion to go in executive session? I make a motion to go into uh, executive session for personnel update and. Uh, Additional items? Do we have two this time? Um, well, we'll find out when we get there. Okay. Um, um, with all of the people physically present in the room uh, who have been listed already, and we will close the public session for the time being. Okay. I need a second. Should we wait till? They have seconded. Should we tell June so that she can go, or do you want me to have her just wait? June. Um, all we have to do is give her the back of the motion. Right. Back. Yeah, we just got to give her the motion. We'll back. The results of the vote. So she can, she can drop. We're going to give you the results, Jude, if you want to drop. Okay, I'll drop. Okay, <laughs> okay and I'll pull, uh, tell me when I can stop the recording. Uh, we voted. You can stop. Okay. Uh, bye, Jude. We
It says recording. It says, it says okay. recording. Good. Good. Okay. Good. 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 Um, okay, we are back in public session. Yes. Um, in 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 executive session, no motions, no votes were taken. Uh, that being said, motion I will entertain a motion. Okay. Um, a motion to extend uh, sick leave to the firefighter under discussion, um, which is a new I, new situation through our meeting of June 9th. Uh, and that's the motion. Motion made. Can I get a second? Any further comments on the motion? No, the only one I would make just because we had several of these in a row mm -hmm. is one matter closed, another matter has opened with a different firefighter, just so it doesn't look like. And that, that was the purpose in, in, in that wording there. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, so there's no more discussion. Uh, Call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries unanimously. Item number eight, public comment. No public comment. Nobody any. else on? No. Nothing. Number nine, to hear and act upon any other business that shall come before this meeting. Uh, just, uh, I just want to let you know that uh, we're working with uh, several groups that are looking to support uh firefighters in ukraine mm. uh and there has been uh some requests for equipment although we don't have a lot of equipment that it would be suitable to send other departments have uh we are working with the uh the amphitheater the former former harbor yard uh to see if a benefit concert uh would be uh appropriate, successful, manageable. Um, the amphitheater owner, Howard Safran, has offered the facility for free. Uh, so waiving the $65,000 fee, um, that's the easy part. The hard part is finding talent to do it uh, at a cost that we could afford that will allow us to make somewhere between one and $2 million we'd be able to send. Uh, we've reached out through the UPFFA to the IAFF, uh, to see if their connections to Dennis Leary, John Stewart, and others uh, who have been very supportive of the fire service would be willing to make connections to a big name talent that would be able to uh, help us uh, run a benefit. So, Maureen Hamill. Who? Maureen Hamill is a local um, producer, whatever. Okay. Um, she is a singer. Yep. And she just produced things and she has a network that won't be the top name acts that you're talking about, but might be able to help round out something. She does have a network that includes the top names. I don't yep. know whether she can. Uh, but she knows the amphitheater people. She sang at their opening events. Oh, okay. And she runs programs at the clinic. Uh, do you have contact information here? Good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's finding the, just the right connection to the right people that knows somebody that knows somebody right. that can help. And, uh, and I don't know whether the Sacred Heart community here, guys, but I can sound that out. Yeah. You know. Okay. In that case, we are up to, I believe, item number 10, yes. which is adjournment. My motion. Motion has been made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're out of here.